Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to generate a list of worksheet names for your workbook without using VBA. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here I have a workbook that has 13 worksheets, a summary worksheet, and then the four quarters for year 2020 through 2022. And I want to generate a list of all those worksheets in column A, D, or G without having to manually type them or use VBA. Now we're going to use an old 4.0 macro function called get.workbook. But because it's a macro function, you have to make sure your workbook is saved as a macro enabled workbook. So if we take a look at file and save as, you can see I saved mine as list of worksheets as a .xlsm workbook, which is a macro enabled one. If I click the down arrow here, most people save theirs as XLSX, but this will not work unless you save it as an XLSM workbook, which is a macro enabled one. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna to go to the formula tab, go to name manager, and we're going to create a named formula. In this case, I'm gonna hit edit because I've already created it. We're calling it sheets, and here's the formula equals transpose get dot workbook with the number one and concatenating that with the t and now functions so how does this work well the get dot workbook function with the type number one generates a list of the worksheets so that's what that macro does but it generates it horizontally so we use the transpose function to convert that to a vertical list. Then we concatenate it with the T and now functions. Now is a volatile function in Excel which generates the current time. And the T function is a text function that looks at whatever that result is for the now function. And if it's text, it will concatenate that to our transpose function but because the now function generates a value, it just generates a blank. So what we've done is we've concatenated our get.workbook and transpose function to a volatile function, which means that any time you hit F9 or you enter a value, it automatically causes your workbook to recalculate. And this way it will update any time you make any changes in terms of renaming a worksheet, adding a worksheet, deleting a worksheet, etc. So now that we have this formula called Sheets, I have Office 365, which has a function called Dynamic Arrays. So I can just go into cell A2 here, say equals sheets, which is the name of my formula, hit tab and hit enter, and it automatically generates a list of worksheets. However, it includes the name of the workbook, so we want to remove that. And how we're going to do that is using the mid function. So we're going to modify this formula by using the mid function. Now our text for that is our formula sheets. My start number, we're going to use the find function to find the end square bracket within the text sheets. And that's going to be our start number, but I want to add a one to that. I don't want to go to that square bracket. I want to go to the next character which starts with Q1 2020 or whatever that is, comma, and then the number of characters, you want to make sure you use a number that's larger than any number of characters you have in any of your worksheets. I'm going to put in 255, but if you only have, in our case, we only have seven or eight characters, I could have put 10 or 12, anything larger than that. But I'm just going to put 255 for that. And now I'll hit enter, and now it's extracted from that list before just the names of the worksheets. And now, if you want to pull in the values from those worksheets, 
I'm going to enter a simple formula that uses the sum function and the indirect function, which is this, and I'm not going to go through an explanation of that, but that will pull in the values from cells B2 to D7 on any of the individual worksheets. I'll copy that down, and now I have pulled in the values from all of my 12 worksheets. If I go to add a worksheet, I'm going to click the plus sign here, and I just added sheet 12. I go back to my summary worksheet. It didn't add it because, again, I have to activate or cause that volatile function to activate. So I can hit the F9 key, and now notice it automatically added that worksheet there. If I move that worksheet, say I move it to the end, Moving it automatically causes my workbook to update, and now it moved it to the end here. So adding a worksheet doesn't automatically cause the workbook to update. Moving it does, or if I delete this worksheet, that automatically causes the workbook to update. So there's that inconsistency there, but that's how that works within Excel. Now, if you don't have Office 365 and you have an older version, say Excel 2013, 2016, etc., and you don't have dynamic arrays, we need to expand that formula to be able to pull in our worksheets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this portion of our formula and I'm going to go ahead and insert that here. And now we're going to wrap that within the index function. So I'm going to say equals index. And we're going to use that mid formula that we had as our array for our index function, comma. Now my row number, I'm going to use the row function. And I'll put in A1 that will generate row one. And as I copy it down, it'll go to row two, row three, row four. So that'll give me the different rows for my index function. I don't have to worry about a column function, so I only have one. And the column number is optional. So I can go ahead and close that. I hit Enter, and it gives me my first worksheet name. And as I copy that down, I get the rest of my worksheet names. Notice after I run out of worksheets, I get a reference error. So what I probably want to do here is wrap this in an if error function and then put double quotes at the end so that if there's an error, it will return a blank. Copy that down and now I have my list of worksheets. And again, I can use that same formula here to go ahead and pull in the data from my worksheets. Now, lastly, what if you don't want the first worksheet name to appear on your list? There's a simple way to do that, and that would be just to hide that first row. And now you don't have to worry about that. It just gives you the rest of your worksheet names. But if you want a formula that will ignore that worksheet that you use for your summary. There was a formula I found on Ashish Mather's blog that I will put a link to his blog below in the notes. But that formula, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in here. Control V. It's quite an elaborate formula and I would take probably another half hour to go through and explain this. So I'm not going to do that, but you have the formula here and you can just copy it and paste it into your workbook. And I don't think you'll need to make any adjustments to it. Copy it down and notice it ignores the initial worksheet and just puts all the rest of the names of the worksheet on your list. And again, I can copy that formula to pull in the values, put that here, paste it, and now I have all my other worksheets excluding the first one and the values for those individual worksheets. And that's how you can accomplish this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bice.com, 
or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy excelling.